What's up guys, right now I'm going to be reviewing California by Mr. Bungle. Um, Mr. Bungle is um, a very eclectic band, uh, or was a very eclectic band from uh, USA um, that have released three um, studio albums and four demo albums actually. Um, back in the 1980s and then and back then uh, when they first started they kind of started out as a kind of almost like a death metal album it was like a, one of the kind of almost like a pioneering album really in that kind of genre and then it totally kind of shifted abruptly on the second demo and then it, things kind of started going more into the, the kind of Kind of ska funk like alternative metal uh, fusion really um, uh, onto the kind of first studio album back in 1991 um, which featured a similar kind of sound and then Disco Volante which was a really kind of quite an all over the place record it was just like to completely like like random a lot of the time it was just crazy so it was kind of probably for the fans of the band and stuff they probably just didn't have a clue where they were going to go on this record like I mean what they were going to do on this record um, and they'd probably be surprised again because they completely changed things up again they kind of um incorporated some kind of like do what do what elements into it and things like that um some like hawaiian music some like surf at times um just a kind of whole range of like kind of i would say some kind of 60s influence kind of like beach boys that kind of stuff really kind of influencing it um it's probably the most kind of chilled out album in a way, even though some parts of it aren't that chilled out. There are some quite kind of uh, like a few bits that kind of throw you off, like kind of um, where there's like um, like a key change or like a shift in like the intensity or something. Um, but yeah, I think the album starts off like pretty mellow and it pretty like kind of soft to kind of begin the record and to kind of get you into it really. It kind of continues that kind of mood, that vibe for the first few songs really. It gets to, to about the middle. It has this kind of, it's oh, it's to kind of have this kind of like uh, on this song that kind of in the middle it kind of has this kind of circusy kind of vibe to it um, and then it, it goes on to the like pink cigarette which is like again like another like really quite a uh, soft one which um, interestingly enough like somebody actually made like a fan video for it and it's got like some like nearly three million views or something like that it's like probably the most like scene video it's just like really weird and it's really like it, it just fits the like song really well well the song's not particularly weird as such but definitely kind of uh it makes you kind of think of it a bit more weirdly um and yeah um and then towards the end of the record there's some it's probably the kind of least accessible part of it especially on the last song um where it totally changes up like like it seems pretty similar on the first part of it like i'm um, talking about the song right at the end of the album which is called uh, goodbye sober day which it kind of starts off sort of with that kind of um, very like 
the um, California influence or whatever. Um, and then it kind of totally shifts into this kind of Eastern sort of really random as hell kind of um, like acapella type section where it, it's just got all these like like it sounds like there's like a thousand voices or something like it's just absolutely ridiculous it's like like this has come out of nowhere and then there's these like drums and stuff building on top and then it's just like yeah this is such a fun thing to listen to and that had some like fan made video for it as well I think it was like um and uh yeah and then it kind of switches back to like the beginning section again it kind of um it's just a very kind of weird song to end the album off with I would have liked the album to have gone on a little bit longer like the first two it kind of seemed like some of the songs were quite short and could have been explored a little bit more and tried to kind of branch out in these different ideas a bit further um, um, and kind of incorporate some more stuff but I suppose it it works well as like a kind of cohesive kind of piece of music really and I think overall it I don't think I quite like it as much as Disco Volante but it's still a very kind of interesting record um, it, it's like um, you know the, the vocals you know spot on with the vocals you know the you know it's got some good like low range it's got some good falsettos um, just kind of standard mic pattern really you know some really quality stuff it doesn't have some like the weird like it doesn't have as much of the weird kind of singing styles that it does in there like like screeching and things so much um, and guitars don't really kind of seem to kind of be that kind of big of a feature in it um, um, and there's a lot of like different like instrumentation kind of working into it so I suppose things kind of got a little bit buried as well as like the vocals did a little bit um, like um, they added some like different stuff like violins they added like um, piano it's just like um, so um, yeah um, another thing I didn't mention is that there was this like um, feud going on between them and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers um, which was to do with a show that they were meant to be on with um, Red Hot Chili Peppers but they um, refused to let them go on it and then they kind of retaliated by putting on their own show at Halloween in, of that year uh, mocking their um, stage presence and their looks and everything and the way they sound um, which you should go ahead and check out if you if you like this band you know and, and, and you don't really like Rat to the Peppers because you might find it quite funny um, how they're mocking them and stuff um, but yeah I mean it's I think that this band could have had like more like potential to have like pushed like further into like the mainstream really because this album did seem a little bit more accessible but I think that the band just kind of kind of just gave up after that I think that they just kind of realised that you know that they wanted to kind of kind of branch out I suppose and just go different ways I mean um, Mike Patton still works well I think with a couple of the people out of it um, but even in that album they kind of well they, they lost a couple of members like um, like a saxophone player or something which they didn't want to have on the album 
because they d didn't need much saxophone in the album, which I suppose made sense that you shouldn't like uh, feel like that you're kind of forced to have it in there. You know, if if they're just no longer needed, then I suppose they're no longer needed. Um, but yeah, this has been going on pretty long, so uh, I just want you guys to let me know what you think about this record and <clears throat> let me know how, how I can like make things a bit better and yeah also I've got a Facebook page so you can go ahead and check that out uh, by clicking on the link in the description so yeah thanks for watching guys and and just like um, stay tuned for more so yeah